So I was browsing the diplomacy subreddit this morning and I came across this post, Convoys Don't Make Any Sense. It's actually been downvoted a fair bit, which I don't understand, I think it makes a very, very good point here. Um, it's talking about how an army goes super fast when it's convoyed. And you can see this with the general sandbox, obviously it's an extreme example, convoying from one side of the map to the other, but it's something that's possible. Why is it the case that an army can only move to adjacent provinces, right? And a fleet can also only move to adjacent provinces. They can only influence the provinces directly next to them. But somehow if you combine the two, you can rocket the army all the way through every single fleet and get it to Smyrna in one turn. And there, there's a point made on here... Um, at the bottom, one of the comments says, none of the game makes sense from actual military or physics standpoints, and I think that's a good point, right? It doesn't work like you would expect real life to, but there's still an internal consistency in diplomacy's rules that gets broken by the convoy rule. Every other scenario, in every other scenario, an army or a fleet can only impact in a radius around itself right? Whether it's moving, whether it's supporting, it can only target adjacent provinces because in the internal logic of the game, that's as far as the unit can go. It can't influence anything beyond that radius. But that rule gets broken for convoys. So some of the theories on Reddit for this are kind of amusing. Uh, we've got the armies use the gravitational force of the fleets to increase their speed. I love this, the gravitational slingshot round to Smyrna. Um, you've got the warships of the fleet are guarding the shipping lane. I think this is probably the, the best explanation from just a, you know, from a realistic point of view. Uh, I, this was the one that I came up with when I first thought of this, um, down here, which is that each individual, uh, army is actually just moving to the next fleet. And so you end up with a situation like this. And then at the end, the the crew of this fleet are disembarking into Smyrna. Uh, so each individual unit is actually only moving one province along. And someone made the point that this is like electrons traveling along an electrical current, which I think is a, a great representation. But if you want to know the actual answer to this, the reason is that the convoy rule was added to the rules late. And I'm not just saying that because I think it's the case, I do know it's the case. And the reason I know it's the case is because of a man called Stephen Agar. Stephen Agar is a brilliant diplomacy archivist who basically collects a bunch of old resources, things like variants. Um, if you go to this site, I'll have it linked in the description, the UK Diplomacy Archive, has an absolute treasure trove of stuff. And one of the most important things, I think, is this one the 1958 version of the rules, which was sent to Stephen by Alan Kalhalmer um, once Alan found out that he was archiving everything. And this was before the game came out. It gives a bit of an interesting insight into what the rules were like in the early version. And if we look at this, it's a little bit difficult to read at points. There's a lot of interesting things in here. For example, in the initial version of Diplomacy, had you not been able to speak. Uh, communications between players are by private written message only, which I think is probably why it works so well as an online game, right? Um, but that's not what we're interested in here. What we're interested in is at the very bottom, armies on board fleets. A fleet may bring one army at a time on board. One of the two units must arrive at the point of embarkation. Any coastal province, one or more moves prior to embarkation, then the other unit is ordered into the province, and the army must be ordered on board the designated fleet. So if you're a bit confused about what that means, basically, uh, in order to convoy, you would not be able to just do this in one turn. Instead, you would have a unit on the coast. It could be the army or the fleet, uh, for example. You would have the other unit move into that province, and the unit that's there would issue a special order called Embark, and that would merge the two units together. And from that point on, the army is on the fleet. And then the fleet could move back out, it could go to somewhere else, and eventually it's going to try and disembark, so the fleet goes... Let's say it's gone all the way around the board, obviously it would take a very long time to do so, but let's say that this fleet is now the one with the army in, it's going to go into Smyrna, um, with the army on it, 
And then the way it disembarks is you just order the army to disembark the fleet, and you order the fleet out of the province. And as long as the fleet makes it out of the province, the army is just left behind there. And so, there you go. Very short video. Just a quick explanation of why convoys are weird. The reason is that they were modified after the rest of the rules were put in place. Um, I think it was a very good thing that they were modified. I think this method of merging the fleets together and then moving out and slowly walking around the board would be so slow as to make it basically impossible for convoys to be strategically relevant at all. I think you would never want to do them. Um, which would mean England would be stuck with just fleets, for example. <laughs> just because, if you think about it, what you could do in one turn in the current version of the game, with Edinburgh moving to Denmark, for example, you would have to move North Sea into Edinburgh to embark the, the army onto the fleet, move it out into North Sea, then move it to Denmark, and then disembark. Uh, so it takes you four turns to do what you do in one turn in the current version of the game. And it, it's super important to have that amount of momentum because four turns in diplomacy is a really long time um, to get one army from here to here. So I think if they kept this original version of the rules, you basically wouldn't see convoys happen in the game at all. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is why um, convoys are weird. They were modified later in the rules in order to make them strategically viable.